My message today is not easily shaken. Not easily shaken. Today, much of what we know, much of what we see around us is shaking. There's much shaking going on in the financial realm, uncertainty, fluctuations in the job market. There's shaking, there's uncertainty in the value systems that maybe we grew up with or, or, we're, or are familiar with. There's shaking going on all around us in, in our health the health systems that we rely upon or relied on, they are shaking. They are, there's uncertainty all around us in people's minds. There's, there's shaking going on, fear, uh, insecurities and worries and darkness, anxiety. There's shaking going on all around us. But we have a promise from God in his holy scriptures that during, during and in times of shaking, he will bring us back to his unshakable foundation, his unshakable ways on which we, in which we can live a life that is not easily shaken, a life that overcomes, a life of victory, a life of, of triumph. There's, in fact, in the, in the scriptures, in the book of Hebrews, it says that when those things that can be shaken in creation, when those things that can be shaken are shaken, that his kingdom, God's kingdom, will not be shaken. And we're given this promise that when we believe on Christ, we're brought into his kingdom and given this unshakable kingdom. You, we live in that today. We are not easily shaken. God has called us. He's called you and I, every believer on Christ Jesus. He's called us to build our lives on his unshakable foundation, to build our lives on his unshakable foundation. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus speaking, he says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus is speaking, hears Jesus' words and acts on them. He'll be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains fell and the floods came. The winds blew and slammed against that house, yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus says, and does not act on them, he will be like a foolish man and, and build his house on the sand. And when the rain fell, when the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, its collapse was, was great. God has called us to build our lives on him, on his son, Christ Jesus, the rock Christ Jesus, and to build our lives on this unshakable foundation. We see it in Matthew chapter 7. The key is to build it based on his voice. He said, those who hear my words and build their lives on these promises and on me, Jesus says, they'll live that unshakable life and be not easily shaken. Father, I thank you that your presence is with us here today. Holy Spirit, speak to every heart. And I thank you that you have called us to live this unshakable life, built on this unshakable foundation in your kingdom, on your Son, Christ Jesus. Speak to every heart. Amen. Where do we hear the voice of Jesus? Well, the scriptures tell us that Jesus' voice is heard in his blood. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew 7 that when we hear his words and build our lives upon his words, we are like it's like we're building our lives on a rock that cannot be shaken. Where do we hear Jesus' words? One area and one place we hear Jesus' voice is in his blood. Hebrews chapter 12 says in verse 24, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood. That's the blood of Jesus, which speaks. We see Jesus' blood, it speaks. What does it speak? It speaks better things than that of the blood of Abel. The scriptures highlight, put in comparison or contrast, Jesus' blood and Abel's blood. Abel's blood spoke vengeance. Abel was killed by his brother Cain. His blood cried out for judgment. His blood cried out for punishment. His blood cried out uh, for, for vengeance. The scriptures set up Jesus' blood in contrast. Jesus' blood, he with Jesus was also killed. He was murdered but in the flesh. But Jesus' blood does not cry out for vengeance. Jesus' blood does not cry out for judgment. Jesus' blood does not cry out for punishment. But Jesus' blood cries out for mercy. Jesus' blood cries out for grace. 
priest. Jesus' blood enacted this new covenant, and Jesus' blood, it speaks to us today. And the scriptures, God is calling us to build our lives upon that voice, the voice of mercy, the voice of grace, and the voice of of this new covenant in Christ Jesus. Forgiveness today. Build our lives on that premise. Build that life that's not easily shaken. I know in my own experience, and many of you can relate, that when we experienced or encountered God through His Holy Spirit, I know in my life when I was filled with the Spirit and encountered the wonderful Holy Spirit, I encountered His love in a way that I had never experienced. And that love was a, had a transformative effect on my life. It, may, it caused my life to do a 180, and I began to serve the Lord, and I began to follow after, after Jesus. But it was, it was that voice from the blood, the voice from the new covenant, the voice of mercy and grace that transformed me. See, that's where we begin our journey, but that's also where we as believers build this unshakable foundation for our lives when everything around us is shaking, when financial systems are shaking, when value systems are shaking, when healthcare systems are shaking. We build our lives on that voice. But in Hebrews, it continues. Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 25, and we're given a warning, in fact. He says, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. Well, who is speaking was verse 24. It was the blood of Jesus, the blood of mercy, the blood of grace, the blood of forgiveness. He says, don't refuse that voice. For if those who did not escape when they refused, for for if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, what's that referring to, earth? Well, it's referring to Mount Sinai where God gave the law, the Ten Commandments. It was the first, it was the old covenant. Much less will we escape who turn away from him who warns us from heaven. Heaven, the voice from heaven is speaking of the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out, the new covenant, and the voice of grace through the blood of Jesus was poured out into every heart. But he says, if they didn't escape the earthly voice, how much more will we not escape this heavenly voice? What does that mean? You say, well, how do I not escape the voice of grace, the voice of mercy, the voice of forgiveness? How do we don't escape that? But it's saying, There is no other salvation. There's no other pathway to an unshakable foundation. There is no other way to build an unshakable life than the grace of God, than the mercy of God, than the forgiveness found in Christ Jesus. There is no other path. There is no other way. You can go back to the old voice. You can go back to the voice of law, condemnation, and guilt, but you will not build a life that's unshakable. And so he warns us, be sure that you hold on. Be sure that you keep living listening to this voice, the voice of grace. Don't go back to the old ways. There is no other salvation but through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his resurrection. That's what we're celebrating next Sunday. But there is no other salvation. And when everything is shaking, we're experiencing that in 2021, so much shaking, so much turmoil, God's called us back to that foundation in his kingdom, through his blood of his son Jesus, to the voice of grace, to the voice of favor, freely given in Christ Jesus. Why would we have to be warned? Because as human beings, and all humans have the same propensity, we have this propensity to go back to this merit-based type of religion. Even Christians. Merit-based means I have to earn something from God. I have to earn blessing. I have to earn favor. And what happens is in times of shaking, that means turmoil, that means negative events. In times of shaking, we go back. It's, our, it's, a, it's a human propensity, human inclination just by default that we go back to, you know, if we think that we have to earn favor from God, when that, in times of shaking, we think, well, maybe God is speaking vengeance or maybe God wants to punish me or maybe God's doing this to me because I've done something wrong, because if we think that we earn blessing by our behavior or our good works or our merit, then when, that, when we don't see it with our physical eyes, we think, well, God must be withholding because he, he, he is angry. But, but, but remember, the author of the book of Hebrews, he warned us and said, don't refuse that voice. Don't stop listening. Jesus' voice does not speak vengeance, does not speak judgment, does not speak this punitive punishment. No, the voice of Jesus says merit-based religion has been done away with. You will not build an unshakable foundation if your foundation is based on the merits of the law or by trying to please God. There is no unshakable foundation. 
And in fact, in the book of Hebrews, we read 24, we read tw verse 25, but in, verse, in chapter 12, verse 26, let's keep reading. And it says, and his voice, again, we're talking about the voice of Jesus spoken through his blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. If his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, yet once more will I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And this expression, yet once more, denotes the removal of those things which cannot be shaken, I'm sorry, which can be shaken as of created things so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Let me tell you, the very first thing, when Jesus' blood, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost and that new covenant came into reality in our lives, the first thing that was done away with and removed was that old covenant, that old merit-based system uh, 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 was totally and uh, completely removed so that that which cannot be shaken would remain. And that's this new covenant of grace. Remember the context of Hebrews 12 of what we're reading today. It was all about Jesus, his blood that speaks, and the new covenant. It remains today. And then he says, therefore, since we have received a kingdom. What kingdom is that? The kingdom of God, the new covenant of grace, which cannot be shaken. Let's show gratitude. In other words, let's live our lives in that reality. Build the, our lives on the foundation of the voice of Jesus that speaks grace, mercy, and favor, and, let, and by which we may offer to God an acceptable service and reverence and awe. The only way that we will live this life of, uh, of, of acceptable service, reverence, and awe is when we are listening to his voice, Jesus' voice, the voice of mercy, grace, and favor. Not the voice of Abel that speaks vengeance and, and punishment because of the wrong that, that, we have, that we have done. There's a warning that unshakable life is built on this voice, the voice of, of Jesus. But what's our part to play in this? Number one, keep hearing Jesus' voice of grace. Keep hearing Jesus' voice of grace. You know, the voice of punishment, the voice of, uh, of judgment, uh, 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 that, that voice doesn't produce a victorious life. You know, at best, out of fear of judgment or fear of, you know, that, that, that type of slavish type of fear, uh, all it produces, at best, it'll produce a fake type of behavior, a fake type of, uh, of victorious life. But you see, what it does, the problem with it is, is that it doesn't do an inner transformation. And so, so inwardly, I still have, might have a desire to do, you know, things that aren't acceptable. Inwardly, I might have a desire to do something else, but outwardly, I'm trying to put on a good show because I think that through, you know, merit, I'm going to please God. Through merit. And so we put on this show, but it's fake. And, 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 but inwardly, there's always this desire. You see, sometimes you hear people, even preachers, and this, even Christian preachers, who act so, talk and act so angrily towards sin and angrily towards people who have sin. And let me, let me make no mistake, sin is very harmful. Bad behavior is very harmful. We, but, but the question is, how do we get out of that? But, but, but so when you hear preachers or people so angry, you know, I, I think many times, and it's sad, but it's because they know that there's a better lifestyle available in God. But inwardly, there's this desire to keep doing the wrong behavior. Desire. You see, it's a sad reality. But that's why this voice of Jesus, his voice of grace, mercy, forgiveness is so important. Because his voice, the voice of the new covenant, comes inwardly and transforms our desires. You see, I, I'm not for living a bad lifestyle. I'm not for a sinful lifestyle. But, 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 but. I, we don't have to be angry at people or angry towards sin in that sense be, be, once the desire has been removed from our hearts. That's the beauty of grace, and that's the beauty of the voice of Jesus. It removes the desire, and we can be kind and loving and lift to people. But, but, but that vo angry voice and that propensity to go back to, especially when times are shaking. That's why I'm preaching this message today, because in times of shaking, we have this inclination just to go back to this voice of judgment, back, and we seek out other voices, voices of preachers that are you know, angry and, and preaching judgment and because somewhere inwardly we think maybe we displease God. That's why all the shaking is happening. But God is calling us back. He's saying in times of shaking, go back to that unshakable foundation. It's found in the voice of Jesus and it's a voice of grace. It's a voice of mercy. And on that foundation, we build an unshakable life that's not easily shaken. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 5. He says in verse uh, 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word. Again, it's going back to the voice of Jesus, Jesus' word. And believes him who has sent me, he has eternal life. And he does not come into judgment, but is passed out of death into life. The curse has been removed. Wrath has been removed. We fear the Lord in awe and wonder, but in this slavish sense of fear, 
That is not a foundation. That's the wrong voice. And on that foundation, we will live a shakable life. But God has called us to live a life that's not easily shaken, building on this unshakable foundation. Number one, keep hearing Jesus' voice of grace. Number two, keep looking to Jesus, the unshakable one. Keep looking to Jesus, the unshakable one. When I say looking, I'm talking about that long gaze. I'm, I'm gazing, I'm beholding, I'm looking at him. Do you know, the position of an unshakable believer is described in 1 Thessalonians. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is the position of an unshakable believer. It says, and I, 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 wait for his son from heaven, whom he has raised from the dead. Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. But notice, wait, waiting for his son from heaven. Notice where the focus is of this person, this believer. Their focus is on Jesus, waiting for his son to come. I have found that especially in times of shaking, which we're in right now especially, that oftentimes focus of believers, genuine believers, good believers, but some, for some reason our focus tends to drift off of maybe Jesus, not entirely, but, but onto things like, for example, the Antichrist or the mark of the beast. God is calling us back to look to him. The scriptures talk about all those things, but our focus is not to be running after who's the... Every generation's had a different antichrist, and every generation's had a, a different mark of the beast. And, and some believers can get so caught up in that, their entire focus is on those... Re no, the focus of an unshakable believer is on Jesus, on him, waiting for him, and as it said, recognizing that he has removed wrath. God is not coming with wrath to punish you. No, he has brought us into an unshakable kingdom, a new covenant, whereby we receive mercy, grace, and favor afresh every day. The scripture says those who are beholding him, they go from Jesus, they go from glory to glory. In other words, from victory to victory, living an unshakable life that's not easily shaken. When Peter, Jesus' disciple, when he was walking on water, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, who was walking above the storm and above the waves, Jesus, uh, Peter was rise, rose above the circumstances. But when, Jesus, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, who was above the waves, and began to look at the waves, he began to sink. We are called to keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is above the circumstances. He is above the shaking. He is a part, he is the founder, you could say, of the this kingdom of God that cannot and will not be shaken. And so we are to keep our eyes, keep looking to Jesus who is above the storm and above the waves and to live this unshakable life. We're to look to him, look to Jesus in financial areas. When finances are shaking, look to Jesus above the financial uh, shaking. There's a story in the scriptures of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 14, the scripture says that Abraham was experiencing much shaking. There was shaking in his family. His, lot, ne his nephew Lot, was, uh, he was in a lot of trouble. He couldn't have a child. There was shaking in his health. There was shake, he was battling four kings. I mean, shaking, shaking, shaking. There was shaking in his finances. He was experiencing difficulty. And maybe that sounds like your life in 2021. He was experiencing much shaking. But we see Abraham do. He didn't live in this new covenant of Christ, but he lived in a, new, he lived in a covenant before the law. It was a covenant of grace. And we see it was a picture of how a, a, a new covenant believer today lives a life. That, that is not easily shaken. We see Abraham, first of all, in Genesis 14, and I'm not going to read the entire scripture for sake of time, but we see that he keeps hearing the voice of grace. He keeps hearing the voice of the covenant. In fact, after battle, he comes back from battling these four kings, and he meets with King Melchizedek, a picture or a type of Christ, and he listens to him. In fact, he partakes in bread, he partakes in, in, in wine. We're going to do that in a few moments here in this service with Pastor Peter, but he partakes in those, which is a picture of, uh, of the the Lord's Supper that we partake in today. It's a picture of the broken body of Christ, the shed blood of Jesus, and the, the covenant of grace that we have received. In other words, in the time of shaking, Abraham kept listening. But then also, too, Abraham looked above the shaking, and he looked to the covenant that he had received in by God, a picture of the covenant that we receive in Christ Jesus. He looked above it, and after partaking in the Holy Communion, he gave King Melchizedek a tithe of all that he had. He, he looked 
above the circumstances, recognizing that God was his provider and his source, and there might be shaking in the area of finance, but he recognized that God, that God will help him to live an unshakable life, even in the area of finance, so he gave him a tithe of all. And what we discover from this story is this, is that, and we see in, the, in, 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 in chapter 15 and verse 1, at the very next verse after doing so, the scripture says, these things, after these things, the Holy Communion, giving the tithe, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not fear Abraham or Abram, I am your shield, your great reward. And that reward means wages. You see, in spite of the shaking going on, God provided for Abraham. The scripture says Abraham became rich. So we see in the area when there was financial shaking, Abraham kept hearing the voice of grace and he kept looking to Jesus, the author of this new covenant. He kept looking to the covenant. And what we learn here is that the tithe is a part of God's new covenant financial system. God's brought us into a new covenant, a kingdom of grace where we, where we will be not easily shaken. And we see that the tithe is a part of God's new covenant financial system whereby we can live an unshakable life. There will be storms. There will be shaking. I mean, some of you in our church have experienced that. We've seen so many answers to prayer over this last year of new jobs, people getting promotions, but there's others who are being challenged. But God is saying, you have an unshakable financial foundation, and the tithe is a part of that. You see, Abraham gave his tithe to King Melchizedek, but, there's, but after the cross, we give it to our high priest, Christ Jesus. In fact, in Hebrews 7, here mortal men receive tithes, but there he, Jesus, receives them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. It's so important in times of shaking to remember that the tithe is a part of this unshakable foundation. In Abraham's son Isaac, in time of famine, he sowed and he reaped a hundredfold. And Paul put it this way in 1 Timothy, he said, instruct them to do good. Be rich in good works, be generous, be ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they might take hold of that which is truly life. There is an unshakable financial future for you in God's kingdom. He's called us to his unshakable ways. And so it, it, when times of shaking in the area of finance, it's not the time to draw back. It's the time to double down and say, I recognize there's an unshakable foundation uh, in Christ Jesus for my finances. And that's why we've challenged our church. In fact, on the way in, I saw some of you responding. We sent out a mailing uh, for those of you who aren't in person yet for a resurrection seed offering. It's happening next Sunday. But why we're as a church adopting that attitude that in times of shaking, God God is our financial foundation. In times of shaking, there is a financial foundation that won't, that won't destroy us, but we will not be easily shaken, but like Abraham, we'll prosper and we'll increase. And we believe that for your lives and why we as a church are saying, yes, we're giving our resurrection seed offering. And we, why we as a church are saying in this year of shaking, even as a church family, we're not pulling back our missions giving, but we're giving double in 2021 because we recognize that we have an unshakable foundation, unshakable shakable financial foundation, even when the financial systems around us are shaking. You and I, we have that. We look above Jesus to him who's our financial foundation. But also think of the, I think of the areas of health. The health systems around us are shaking. All we hear about is how sickness is lurking in every corner and, and it seems like everything is falling apart in the area of health. But I tell you, in Christ, we have an unshakable health system. In fact, if you look to Abraham, partook of the Holy Communion, the bread and the wine. Later on, he was healed. In fact, today is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, when we remember when Jesus rose from the dead and went to the cross on Good Friday. But in between, the, Jesus partook in the, la, the Lord's Supper, which, which we call that last supper with his disciples. But that was a picture of the first Passover in Egypt. When God told the Hebrew people, slaves at the time, I'm sure there was much sickness and disease in their bodies. They were slaves. They didn't have good health care systems. But he told them to take a lamb. He told them to take the blood, put it on the doorpost, and to eat the flesh. And I love what the scripture says. It says, and the plague will not harm you. The plague will not harm you. In many ways, 2020, we're living in this type of plague, people call it, this plague. But we recognize that we have an unshakable foundation, an unshakable health foundation in Christ Jesus. Remember, his voice speaks grace. His voice speaks favor. And his, 
voice speaks health to you today. And so we, remember what we, we, we read at the very beginning, it was a warning, do not refuse this voice because it is the only way to salvation. The only way, it's by grace. It's by favor. Let's listen to that voice. The Holy Communion, which we will partake in in a few moments time, it's part of God's new covenant health care system. And I tell you what, keep hearing that voice. Lean into it. That play, the plague that we are encountering now, it shall not harm you. It shall not destroy your home. We, 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 we listen to that voice. We keep our eyes above the storm, above the, the negative news that hits us 24-7. Yes, there's shaking going on, but we will not be easily shaken because we have this unshakable foundation in Christ Jesus. And we hear his voice today that we will be blessed not out of our own ingenuity but because he's favored us in Christ Jesus and we will live healthy and whole lives not cowering in fear to the voice of the plague but but rising up in boldness and confidence recognizing that we will not be easily shaken because we're more than overcomers of in Christ Jesus and I know I'm talking to overcomers today I know with inside of your heart right now your spirit man is bubbling over it's rising up and saying yes I, I felt the temptation to listen to the wrong voice, to listen to the voice, and, and I feel like I'm shaking, but I recognize that it, in, living within me is the unshakable one. That kingdom that shall not be shaken, it lives inside of the heart of every believer because Christ Jesus lives within you. The kingdom of God dwells in your heart and it's rising up right now. It, it may be covered in a bit of cobwebs and it might have, you may not have activated that boldness and that faith for some time, but I tell you what, it's stirring right now. It's rising up it might even be saying, come on out to Easter Resurrection Sunday or Good Friday services here at Celebration Church if you live in Toronto. But it's saying, I, enough of this just cowering in fear. No, I have an unshakable health system. And I'm going to, you, maybe you say, well, I've held back in my giving over this last year out of fear. No, I see, but now what's rising up within you is this boldness and saying, I have an unshakable financial system of God in Christ Jesus. And I know he is my provider. And so like Abraham, we boldly give and we boldly go forward and we recognize we will not be easily shaken. I tell you what, we're going to have an opportunity in a moment with Pastor Peter to, to do just that, give our tithes and give our offerings. We're going to partake in the Holy Communion. I tell you, take a hold of that promise today. I, 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 I'm, out, I'm about, I got two and a half minutes and then I'm going to Pastor Peter. But, but let me tell you, I, something within me, when they told me that my children couldn't go to daycare uh, because if they even got a sniffle during this whole pandemic, I said, my goodness, you know, toddlers, one-year-olds, two-year-olds, they always have sniffles, but I thought they're not going to be staying home. Every night we've taken their hands, all fuzz as a family has said, we've prayed over them in the name of Jesus. And that's nothing special about me. It just rose up within me. We're not cowering to this to this spirit of fear that this plague will harm us. No, we have a promise in God, of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Well, I, I know you're clapping at home. I'm excited here. But let me just say this right now. There is a human propensity to think we need to earn God's favor. And maybe that's you today. Maybe there is only one way to receive his favor and his grace, and it is that is to receive it. Maybe you've never received his forgiveness. Maybe you live in guilt, and maybe you live in shame. Maybe you're overcome by regrets. Can I encourage you to receive his grace, receive his favor today? Believe on Jesus. The scripture says that those who believe on Jesus, to them he gives the power to become the sons and daughters of God.